Quinn, what are we working on? Project Exoset. What do we got? We got... It looks pretty done. We got the uh, Hooligan Lover project tonight. Let's give, the, let's give everybody an update. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been okay. a while since we've done anything with Project Exoset. The car is running. Maxie and I have even gone out and driven it yep. on the street. We didn't beat on it because it's not fully tuned. We did a little bit of tuning on it, but it's very difficult trying to tune this on the street when it's this cold out. And I think it was like we were trying to tune cell by cell and the cell, but it was too far off. So I think it was just blending through the surrounding cells. It, it was, well, we were having a lot of difficulty. So for those of you who don't understand what it takes to tune, you, you have like cells for your fuel and your ignition. And it looks like an Excel spreadsheet and it's based off of load, some sort of load factor and RPM. So the map resolution on, what is this ECU? Hydra. This is a Hydra. It's 32 by 32. It's ridiculous. It's too high. It, sh it should be 16 by 16. And it's like 200, what was it? 250 RPM? Increments? Yeah, it was like two, it, it, the, the increments changed uh, depending on where you were. Like it was more fine tuning for idle and then there's more fine, and then it like spread out more as well, you go up in the RPM. I'm used to like 500 RPM. Yeah. Yeah. Usually a 16 so by it's like 16 literally table. Like you tune, you know, 3,000 3, RPM, then 3,500 RPM. You just yep. go right up. But you have to hold the engine RPM and load to keep it in a cell to look at your air fuel ratio and feel how it's how the engine seems. Is it happy? Do you hear a detonation? Whatever. What, what do your fuels look like while you're holding it in that cell? And it starts to get confusing when that when they call it inter interopulation. Is that correct? Interopulates when the yeah. cursor starts to go into the next cell, because you're not exactly- It's blending. It's blending, yeah. yeah. It's, hard, it's hard to hold it exactly. This is even more difficult um, because it's such a fine resolution, and then it's also like you're in an exposed car, cold, all the factors like- Dark at night when dark. I decided to buy a tuning laptop that didn't have a backlit keyboard. And he gets the laptop that has like the 13 inch screen on it, which is like <laughs> really hard to see. Um, but anyways, enough excuses, but that's how you street tune is you have to go through and you have to get you have to get the engine into every single one of those load cells and, and tune them and then you go to the dyno and you can play with your timing advance to see what it makes your power because you can't really feel timing adjustments on the street and then after you're done tuning on the dyno you put it back on the street and you check the map because the load is different although they say it's supposed to be the same but the load is slightly different and usually on like a turbo force induction car um, the tune is going to be off a little bit when you go back to the street so you make some fuel adjustments you usually don't have to touch timing at that point but anyways, that's what we did. Um, we're gonna try to get on the dyno hopefully soon, and we could do a little bit of uh, footage and filming there. But tonight, we're gonna install our Drifty Hydro e-brake setup, which this is gonna use, Matt knows the setup better than I do. We're using another set of calipers, Matthew. Yeah, second set of calipers. We, if you remember, I, I, don't, I think it might've been like a year ago. So we had Derek modify Let me see. our rear knuckles. This is actually, it's a kit you can buy. It's uh, from Zarek Fabrication. I don't know if we could see it right now, but there's, there's a second set of- uh... Here, hold on. You, you hold that in and I'll shine a light on this. Oh, perfect. Get the old cell phone light up. We did a video on it at one point. Right, right, but, yeah, right there's, here. There's a mounting point for a second set of 1.8 standard uh, calipers for a Miata, which I happen to have an extra set. So, so we're gonna bolt those bad boys up. Here, let's go house. to the bench. Everything's out on the bench. Oh, perfect. Turn that light off here. <sighs> Tease on an FD. Look how dusty that car is. Yep. All right. So here's so, our. Oh, Matthew, nice job on these calipers, by the way. Yeah, they were in good shape. They were the original uh, rear calipers from my red car. So we got some 1.8 Miata calipers here that were painted. Uh, 1.8, these are what, Hawk HP Pluses? They're uh, Porterfield. Porterfield. Uh, street track pads. Here's our sicky, because it's sick, hydraulic e-brake lever and our new master cylinder, which we're going to run brake lines. Yeah, which actually, Eximotive made custom brake lines for us. Which was really cool of them. Look if they even labeled it. Yep. Oh, wait, no, you got to with the other, other bag, the label. Custom. Oh, slip, slip angle, angle edition. Yep. Damn. Yeah. The, the guys at Eximotive been, have been really helpful yeah. throughout this whole project. Well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to put this whole thing back together if we didn't have their support because there's a lot of, we got it with a lot of unknowns, right? Yeah. It was in pieces. 
It was two years ago. We got it Christmas Eve two years ago. Wow. Yeah. And we're only two days away from Christmas Eve in 2022. Yeah. So I'm going to show a picture of what it was that day when we unloaded it. I remember <laughs> I took a lunch break. That was fun. And came back, came over and un helped you unload it. And then now two years later, what it looks like right now. I mean, I wish I had the nose cone on, but it's, it's pretty much done. Um, we just need the windshield after after we do this hydro rebrake and then a new steering wheel and something. Yeah, well, th that's things we can gradually. Yeah, yeah but then take those care are of. like just like little finishing touches. But anyway, so they made us new brake line kits and basically we're going to run a single line off of the new master yep. down to this split and then these are going to go to the calipers. Yep, it's going to be the like a similar routing to what the rear brakes are right now. So it's literally just going to be we'll probably zip tie one one set of lines to the other. But. Fact, you know, factoring me out a handbrake is just cable on the calipers yeah. and it's really weak and, you know, you don't have that, that good braking force of hydraulic pressure, which is what you want on the handbrake. And there's two ways to do it. You can actually, like, you can create a split in the factory system and then hook up a hook up a hydro e-brake to work with the factory calipers. Yep. I, I think it, you know, with the, with the resources out there for a Miata, having, like, a dual caliper set up for cheap. I mean, I Keep, think the kit... Keeping it fully independent is kind of nice, yeah. too. I yeah. mean, I don't... Let's put, let's put this out there. I don't like adding weight and adding additional things, but in the case of the Exoset, and especially this one with the long travel rally suspension, know, the like... fact that this thing was, you know, cranked into a tree in its first life, like... I don't really care. I will. We'll, we'll take the little bit of extra weight because this thing's gonna be. Um, it's gonna. It's gonna be. It's, it's not gonna, gonna have be a problem a, being heavy. Ride it. Yeah. Yeah. I've already signed up for four track days this year, oh and I I want to take this to as many of them as I can. So for those of you who don't know, the transmission tunnel from the shifter forward is removable. And well, yeah, thanks to how I installed it. We already marked where we're gonna place our our hydro e brake. And we're going to uh, just remove it, drill it out, and mount it there, and then run our lines underneath the car. Yep. And then attach the two new calipers, bleed the system. So we're not going to show every single step, but we'll show the important stuff and kind of walk you guys through this. Yeah, we'll leave it on like a time lapse or something. And then we're that much closer to being done, to being knuckle headed hooligans in our Project Exo set. Quinn, show off what we I did. I want this. What we did. Oh, That's right, sicky. Yep. Yeah, we got this one because it has the. Uh, a lot of them are uh, have the uh, the master cylinder in the back. I like this because it's got a pivot right here. Yeah. And it puts the master cylinder up front because there's all this room right here. It's perfect. All right, let's see the bottom. Let's see what we did on the bottom. All right, hold on. Put my seltzer down here. Put that. Look at that. Got a nice uh, metal plate Professional. underneath. Professional. We even got heat management under here and yep. everything. Zinc plated. Hardware. Topped it off a little Loctite too. Yep. Sick. Should be good. Nice. Let's throw this thing back in. And then we got to run some lines. And then we got to install some rear calipers. And then we got to bleed some brakes. It's not that bad. No. That's how you do it. I got no pressure. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we it's just mounted. Just mounted for now in the tunnel. Um, Looks good. Yeah, yeah, I think it came out good. We're like we're like pro drift car builders now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sick. Sign us up for uh, what is it? What is it called again? What's the series? Formula Drift. Japanese one or the U.S. one? U.S. one. U.S. one's Formula D or Formula Drift. Yeah. Are we gonna drift this thing? We're just doing stuff. Not seriously. Yeah, we're we're just we we just want to have fun. I like I like yeah that's exactly I like doing fun drifts high yeah. speed. Yeah, I like. Let's call them power slides, and not be like everybody else. Whatever. We're just having fun. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. So this is all mounted. Um, Quinn found a grommet. Uh, it's an S2000 valve cover grommet, right? Yeah. Uh, it worked out pretty well. Um, it's tight on the line, just so it doesn't rub against the aluminum. And we um, said that the tunnel's aluminum underneath. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and the line's just kind of hanging down. Next, we're gonna install the uh, the second set of rear calipers, and then we're gonna finish running the lines and uh, get this thing bled. We'll be done pretty soon. My FD has a dead battery, 
Yeah, yeah, we would have been on the lift, but... We couldn't get it off of the lift. <laughs> and it's, he, it's cold as shit outside, so we're yeah. pushing it. He, he just drives the FD way too much. But it just, <laughs> you know, I, I drove it once this year. You did? I went around the neighborhood. I'm impressed. Didn't even boost it. Yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get these uh, rear calipers on. She's a success. All right, Quinn. Complete success. Uh, there's a little bit of drag in the uh, driver's side rear. Um, I don't think that's related to this though. Yeah, I don't think it's related to this either because I loosened up that that little uh, Allen for the uh, for the parking brake and it didn't make a difference. So we're just running out of time tonight. But oh wow, there's definitely more drag though because I was able to do this pretty freely the other night. I think it's in gear. Oh, you can bump these out. There's just that much drag on that caliper. Yeah, you can hear it. Listen. But well, why though? I don't know. That makes no sense. We didn't put springs on th on that one. We put springs on this one because we wanted to see if there was a difference. Is it really the springs that are doing that? There's no way. Well. I guess. I mean, I guess if the pads are that juicy, like, and there's nothing like spreading them apart a little bit, but this feels like there's like, something really dragged. Yeah, I want to, when when we have more time, I want to like take it apart and uh, take a closer look at Although, it. Although, you know what though? Like, putting those pads in with the, with those like clips that we have, they were tight. Like, there was like, the pad, the pad wasn't moving in either freely, so maybe this is riding up against that a little bit. Yeah. It will clear, it's, clear it's itself. Yeah, we took it. I took it for a quick ride down the road. Um, it's twenty. It's twenty-two degrees outside right now. Yeah, that was a bit much, yeah. but um, whatever. Ooh, that's what I see. Yeah. Why is it down? Yeah, we didn't. I should have uh, hooked up a camera or something like that. We were trying out the the handbrake. It was pretty cool. Uh, we can't really beat on the car right now because it's not tuned, but um, yeah, that's pretty cool having that handbrake. That was the first time I ever done it in real life outside of sim. I've never used one. No. Oh. It's pretty cool though. I don't know. What else do you have to say about this, Quinn? Um. All right, we just have to get it tuned and then uh, get a new windscreen and that's it, right? I think you just need to tune the NOS timer down. Another millisecond? Another millisecond and it'll run nines. Oh, of course. Sick. Yep. Because you know your NOS timer has, Sick, has a huge bro. impact on ET. All right. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will... Uh, See you guys and gals in the next one. Next one will be a tuning video, right? Should be. Yep. Yeah. Gotta get this thing to the dyno. To the dyno we go. Take a guess at how much power it's gonna put down. Put it in the comments. Yep. Maybe we'll give you some GQ Army swag if you nail it on the dot. Yeah, GQ Army swag? Oh, I'm still playing <laughs> the media. Sorry. I'm all in yeah. GQ Army mode right now. All right, that's it. All right, boys and girls, till next time. Don't.